Alright guys, so today we're back in some of my favorite stomping grounds looking for snakes. Now there's a few different ways that you can find snakes and uh, a lot of you guys have asked how we go about finding them. And honestly there's a lot of luck involved and there's a couple different ways to find snakes. Now obviously it differs depending on where you are, but uh, today I'm going to be showing you a few of the ways that we like to look for them. Snakes are something we film quite often on the channel because they aren't too quick and I have a lot of experience with my local species. I love all animals, and I study and observe all kinds, but I end up filming a lot more snakes because of this. Not to mention, a lot of people find them really fascinating. That or the YouTube algorithm only recommends my snake videos half the time. Alright guys, so what we're going to do now is we're going to walk this edge to look for snakes. Now snakes, what they'll do in the morning time is they'll come out on these edges to sun. At night they sit, they hunker down somewhere in the woods, and when the sun comes out, They'll sit in little patches of sunlight right along the edge. This can be on the edges of roads, on the edges of just basic forest areas where a little meadow is right in front of it. Anywhere that's nice and open next to a wooded area, you can spot snakes right along here. Now really I want to be looking ahead of myself because they'll take off about 20 feet away from where you're actually looking half the time. So you want to look ahead, look for a snake slithering in the grass. And this is a great way to find racer snakes. Uh, in some areas you can find coach whips doing this, speckled king snakes, the occasional rat snake. Uh, so this is a really good way to catch stuff. The only thing is I gotta watch to make sure I don't step on a mock. But uh, that's what we're gonna do for a bit and uh, see if we can find anything. Here we go, here we go. That's a snake. It's a speck. Oh, that was a racer. Hello, buddy. Ah, uh, nice and cool. Hello, look at you. Have a look at this little guy. That is a speckled king snake. This is one of my favorite things to find doing this. Hello. You're not going to bite, are you? You're not going to bite, are you? Look at that belly. Black and yellow belly. Beautiful. Ah, he's musking on me. Blah. Yeah, that's what they do when you pick them up. A lot of snakes will do that. Oh, it's okay. King snakes will actually strike, but they are just like that. <laughs> they are a non-venomous species. I believe that this is a little male. And depending on where you find the snake, they can have a lot more speckling than this. They can have a plain belly. There's a lot of really cool variation. Oh, look at his tail. He is not happy with me. Look, see that S position? He's gonna strike. Whoop. See that? Ah, it's okay. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm gonna put you back in a second. It's a really cool snake species. There's a lot of different variations of king snakes. There's the eastern kings, mole king snakes. There's some really cool species. And speckled kings are just my local species. So depending on where you're at, oh, it's okay. You can find all sorts of different ones. And he is not happy. Half the time I find these snakes, they're really friendly. But this one, he is just wanting to get away from me really soon. So uh, we're going to go ahead and put him back and uh, see if we can find a snake another way. All right. See you, little buddy. He is not happy with me. That's all right. You can go. Go, go. This looks really good. I found a couple things here. Checking around old rubbish and debris can be really good for snakes, especially when there's rats and mice. This is often why snakes can be found around barns and some houses. Whenever there's something to hide under, whether it's man-made or not, snakes love it. Oh, ring that. Ring that. Hello, little buddy. What are you doing? Come here. Oh, he's getting in the Have a look at this little guy. These are super calm. Super common, especially under tin like that. Have a look at that belly. Bright orange belly. This is probably one of the most common snake species out here. I should say it's one of the most numerous snakes. You don't normally see them out and about because they'd be hiding under tin, leaves, and little rocks, but there are a lot of them. A lot of things eat these guys, king snakes, sp speckled kings specifically around here. Little milk snakes will eat them, birds, and uh, they're really cute little guys. They're a fossorial snake. They spend a lot of their time underground. And uh, as you can see, you can see where they get the name ringneck snake. They've got a little ring right around their neck, and they've got a bright colored belly. Have a look at that. Big bright belly. And this one's got an orangish belly. They can have a yellow belly, a reddish belly, depending on where they're at. And this is about full grown. They can get a bit bigger than this, but this is about average size for an adult. They mostly eat worms and little invertebrates, so uh, they're not like your other snakes that are going to be eating rodents and, uh, and lizards and stuff under this stuff. They're mostly hunting for little worms. All right, we're gonna go ahead and let this little guy back under his tin to keep hunting worms. Here you go, bud. There you go. Back under your leaves. 
cool. Well, that's our first snake. We'll uh, see what else we can find. That was cool. All right, guys. So right now what we're trying is what's called road cruising. It's basically just driving back roads very slowly, looking for snakes. Obviously, you want to do your best not to hit any. But, uh, you know, just looking for little stuff, big stuff. Sometimes snakes are really easy to spot. Sometimes they're very, very difficult. About this time of day is when snakes will be coming onto the road to sun themselves for the rest of the day before uh, basically going off into the woods, going to hide under stuff, or going to hunt for the day. So this is a really good way to find rat snakes, corn snakes, the occasional king snake. I see a lot of water moccasins doing this, but uh, there's a whole stack of different things that you can see doing this. And just driving roads in general, you'll see all kinds of different wildlife. So it's a good way to get around. I found a lot of different snake species. And I truly can't blame any level of it on skill, but the more I search, the more I find. And that's normal for pretty much everything, not just snakes. Some days we find absolutely nothing, and other times we see whole stacks of wildlife. That is a snake. Is it a king snake? Please be king snake. Ah, it's a moccasin. Look at that punk. I told you I'd see a moccasin. Hey, you, get off the road. I don't feel like doing another moccasin segment, guys. Listen, I've been filming these for like three months. Yeah. Shoot. Yeah. See, I told y'all we'd see one. He was very skinny. He didn't look too good. But, uh, yeah, that's what you do when you see a venomous snake. You move it off with a stick or something like that. Or, you know, you can just walk up to it and sometimes they'll just walk away. Or slither away, I should say. So that's what you do when you encounter a venomous snake if you don't know how to do anything with them. Obviously, if I'm not filming them, normally I leave venomous snakes be. So uh, that's a good practice to have. Let's see if we can find something else. All right, we're getting to the end of the road right here. It loops around right this way. But I didn't find anything on the road on the way in, but I found just as many snakes on the way back than on the way in. I've caught just as many, if not more, doing that. So. There's just as good a chance driving the same road we just did on the way back to find another snake. Does that stick there before or am I crazy? Here. That's not a stick, that's a snake. It's a rat snake, yes, yes, yes. It's a big rat snake. Is that the same one I found a couple days ago? Oh, check this out. She's got a huge lump. Right here, it's gotta be a rat, a rat or a big bird. Now, I don't think I wanna handle her too much. Now, notice what she's doing. She's all kinda crinkled up, laying in the street, and that's her laying the scales on the rocks to heat up. This is something that rat snakes and corn snakes do, and that's why I said you've got a better chance of seeing a rat snake laying on the road rather than just crossing it. This snake is laying right here, collecting heat, so she's not crossing it. I'm not gonna disturb her until she starts moving, but look at how big this snake is. Five foot easy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want to handle her too much, because if I do handle her too much, she will regurgitate whatever's in her stomach, and that's a big meal. So I'm going to try to keep her kind of on the ground, her whole body supported, and keep her nice and relaxed. Now this, I call it a Texas rat, but based on location, this would technically be a gray rat. This is a huge snake, absolutely massive. They're pretty prevalent through the United States. It's a very common snake. And rat snakes throughout the world are a very common species. In fact, there's rat snakes all throughout Asia, all throughout North and South America. They're a very interesting species. And this is the most prevalent rat snake in this area. She's staying nice and calm, crawling gently. I don't want to agitate her, pick her up by her tail. It's very important to know when you can do certain things with animals, so I can't pick her up by her tail and hold her up to show you how long she is. And I gotta make sure that she keeps that down, that, that food. Now what's cool is, I think I actually saw this snake just a couple of days ago when I came back here. I saw a really big rat snake within this little turn. And uh, I think it's actually the same snake, but it didn't have this big lump in it the last time I saw her. So she's gotten a really good meal since I last saw her. And that's something really important to know is that when you leave snakes in the area, when you see them and then leave them, you have a good chance of seeing them again. And it's very important to understand that there is a natural balance 
animals are in the area for a reason. And if you remove or relocate an animal, there's got to be a reason for it. And you have to be very respectful of nature. Basically, if I would, had removed this snake a few days ago, of course, this is a good area. There's no reason to remove this snake from the area. But if I were to remove it from here, I wouldn't have seen it again today. So if you want to keep seeing snakes in the wild, it's good to leave them most of the time. I only keep snakes rarely. Most of the time, I'd say 99.8% of the time, I let my snakes go. Only keep them for occasional research and when they need to be relocated. This area is really healthy, really good, and isn't going to be cleared anytime soon. So this snake can live a good long life here. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. This is one of my favorite ways to find snakes, is driving roads and seeing them just like this. Laying out in the street, just heating up for the day. Very, very cool. An actual fact, one that I've been wanting to find for a long time is the black rat snake. Black rat snakes are actually really common north of here, but I've never actually seen one. So hopefully we'll get to film one of those one day too. All right, we're gonna go ahead and let this snake go now. We're gonna let her cross the road. Nobody's coming down this road right now. So yeah, we're just gonna let her cross the road and uh, get on with her day. Beautiful animal, absolutely beautiful. Well guys, that's it for this video. We really hope you enjoyed. If you did, definitely leave a like and consider subscribing for future videos. We'll see you guys next time.